But man, that sure was a close call. You almost died. If you had paid attention on YouTube, you would have known to stay away from that particular neighborhood in Detroit. You would have known to stay away from all of Detroit, because Detroit is a gangster's paradise. When you look at the crime numbers, most of the Midwest isn't too bad for crime. It's about average. Missouri's really bad. And look at that. Michigan's up there too. Five years ago, Michigan was about average when it came to crime numbers per capita. But at this rate, Michigan's close to cracking the top 10 when it comes to robberies, shootings, carjackings, and all that other BS. And within the state of Michigan, there's some bad, bad areas. Places where you shouldn't be out after dark. Because it is super scary out there. What's up? I'm undercover out here on a golf course in rural Michigan. I can't reveal my exact location because I'm chasing a perp who's been known to frequent local links. He's really sticking the greens, if you know what I mean. Crime's not so bad out here in rural Michigan. Just a stolen sled or a noise complaint here or there. Patrick's calling. 10 4, Tammy. Well, I better putt. Nobody likes slow play. And that is how you blend in out here. If you think that you are tough in Michigan, there's lots of trouble. Everybody here will tell you better hide from all of the dangerous. Michigan. There were more than 47,000 violent crimes here in this state last year and more than 700 murders. That sounds scary, but it's nothing like it was in the 1990s when this place was a madhouse. But as you can see, crime had been going down somewhat over the last couple decades, and Michigan's violent crime rate was a little bit below average. Not anymore. You can't get too comfortable around here. It's getting worse and worse over the last couple years. There are certain parts of Michigan that you might get jacked at Myers. Yes, even Myers isn't safe anymore, and that is a shame. Especially the Myerses and the places we're going to talk about. Places like Ypsilanti. Now, certainly, there's going to be far more violent places in the state of Michigan than Little Ypsilanti. It's a city of 20,000 people out on the fringes of Ann Arbor. But the number of violent crimes and property crimes per capita are both 15th in the state. It could be the crime numbers are inflated here because this is home to Eastern Michigan University. There's a lot of property crimes on college campuses. If you lived in Ipsy, you'd have a 1 in 27 chance of being robbed every single year. If you factored in violence, you'd have a 1 in 22 chance of being a victim. And apparently there's somewhat of a heroin problem here too. There's a lot of stolen cars and catalytic converters here. Plus, this little city has a much higher rate of rapes than other cities of its size in Michigan. They just found a dead body in the park not too long ago. That sucks. Just ask the students who live around campus. They're getting used to the campus-wide emergency emails and sirens at all hours. Now, you may not have even heard of Little Albion. It's a city of only 8,600 people in Calhoun County off of I-94, about halfway between Jackson and Battle Creek. It is rough here, pal. The city has a shockingly high number of registered sex offenders for such a small place. There's more than a hundred of them here for some reason. That's six times higher than the national average. That's sick and sad. Look at this chart. The violent crime rate in Albion is three times higher than the state average. If you lived here, you'd have about a 1 in 19 chance of being the victim of a robbery or some sort of an attack. 1 in 19, people! Well, that was not a good shot, but that's okay. Undercover law enforcement officers don't have to be good drivers. We have to be sneaky, and sneaky is what I am. Now, let's go out to Highland Park and see what the danger level is out there, shall we? Highland Park is a teeny little city that's completely surrounded by Detroit. It's over by Hamtramck. Robberies and thefts aren't the big problem here. Highland Park only ranks 25th in the state for property crimes. The problem here is violence. Highland Park is the second most violent place you can live in the entire state of Michigan. There's a connection between violence and poverty. Almost half of the entire city of Highland Park lives in poverty. This place also has the highest unemployment rate in the entire state of Michigan. Statewide, 5% of Michiganders are out of work. Here in Highland Park, it's 13%. If you lived in Highland Park for a year, you'd have a 1 in 48 chance of being beaten, raped, or killed. I bet if you were into gangs or drugs, you'd have a 1 in 2 chance of being attacked or killed. Scary stuff, people. 
Somebody asked the internet, where are the good areas of Highland Park? <laughs> there were two replies. One person talked about how a friend was beaten up there while pumping gas. Another said, there is no good area of Highland Park. Most properties are abandoned, the schools are terrible, and there's rampant crime. There's no reason at all that you need to be in Highland Park unless you live there or deliver mail. He's not very scary. I know he's a dragon, but he's nice. You wouldn't get shot hanging out with him. Yes, it gets worse, people. We're here in Jackson, a city with a rapidly shrinking population. In this city of 33,000 people, there's at least one violent crime a day, five robberies a day, and two rapes a week. And a bunch of drugs. Lots and lots of drugs. Seems like every day there's overdoses and shootings here. The city of Jackson provides a rare glimpse into the extent of the crimes here on a unique crime sheet. Looks like there weren't any peeping toms. That's good. But kidnapping's up 75%, stalking's up 6%, extortion's up 200%, and stolen property's up 320%. Fugitive flights are up 30%, and juvenile runaways are up 10%. A woman named Amy, who apparently ran away from Jackson to Cape Coral, says, Jackson's principal products are bad backs, <laughs> that's weird, alcoholism, drug addiction, and divorce. Doesn't sound like a very nice place to me. How about you? This is what it's like in Flint on most nights. That guy's a good shot. Scary stuff. Now we're getting to the really rough places. Of course Flint's going to be on here. Come on now. Violent crime in Flint's on the rise again, and it's now 500% above the national average. How is that even possible? People who live here have a 1 in 50 chance of being the victim of a rape, an attack, or a murder. And murders are up big time here, mister. Last year, Flint topped more than 60 homicides for the first time in almost a decade. The bad news headlines go on and on. This is what happens when a city loses all of its jobs, everyone. Head on over to Fenton Road and you'll see prostitution. But stay in your car because there's human trafficking over there. Go down to Broom Park and there might be dead bodies and human remains. Go to the ghetto mall in town and there's bullet holes inside. Visit the hospital in town and go stand outside. You'll see people dropped off at the ER by their homies, either shot or overdosed. When the gangsters show up, they just toss their guns in the bushes in the hospital before they go inside. It's just tragic. People get shot just driving around. You'll see people slumped over in their cars or on park benches, clearly on drugs. Flint had so many shootings last year, they called for a 24-hour ceasefire. They actually made it exactly 24 hours before somebody got killed by gunfire. Flint's dirty, it's sad, it's depressing, and it's even better than it was back in the day. Can you believe that? Kalamazoo probably doesn't have as many crimes as in Flint, but per capita, it's actually worse here. There were only four other cities in the state with a higher percentage of robberies. You'd have a 1 in 20 chance of being robbed yourself if you lived here. Kalamazoo County saw more murders last year than it had this entire century. Every day in Kalamazoo, three people are either attacked, raped, or murdered. There's only 76,000 people here. What is happening in Kalamazoo? And what is happening in Michigan? Well, the Kalamazoo Police Department says setting low bail amounts lets criminals back out onto the streets. Just a few months ago, a guy shot eight people and got out of jail in less than 24 hours. That's after being charged with eight counts of assault with the intent to murder. Prosecutors had asked for a million dollar bail, but the judge went with a $20,000 cash bond. And I bet I know where that $20,000 came from, because, you know, the guy was likely a dealer. Kalamazoo is also along I-94. Why is everything along I-94 so bad here? I live in Michigan, and I would never want to live near I-94. That highway is scary. That's what people say on TikTok anyway. Well, I think it's time you put that phone away and studied more, little Maddie Mappy. Now, Lansing was out of the top 10 here in the state of Michigan, but a recent surge in violence has Lansing as one of the most dangerous cities in the whole country now. Lansing just surpassed its murder record after it had just set a new record the year before. According to the latest FBI numbers, Lansing had the ninth highest violent crime rate in the nation last year. Lansing police say the violent crime is up for many reasons. You know, racial inequality riots and because of the pandemic. No, I'm sorry, Lansing police. I think it's because you have stupid, desperate losers in your community who need to be shipped away to the North Pole. And the kids, the teenagers here run the place. 
How do you let a bunch of punk teenagers ruin a place? I don't get it. One initiative Lansing Police is trying is working with these at-risk kids. You know, giving them some love and positive support and an outlet beyond gangbanging. That's good. How about taking away their guns too? Well, they're trying. Lansing Police have taken more than 400 guns off the street in the last year. Well, that's only a small fraction of the total guns that were stolen from Lansing households. It helps, but it doesn't help a lot. It's so bad here that a lot of the young black kids are applying for their concealed carry permits. What the hell? 10-4, Tammy. I have an ID on the suspect. He's going four miles an hour on the 14th fairway, driving a beige late model golf cart without plates. Permission to make a stop. Welcome to Benton Harbor, or Benton Harlem, as a lot of people call it. It's a small city of under 10,000 people right on the shores of Lake Michigan. While most of Lake Michigan is some of the best real estate in the nation, this place is the pits. Benton Harbor's in the top 10 in Michigan for all the wrong reasons, rapes, murders, robberies, unemployment rates, poverty. People who live here have a one in 45 chance of experiencing a violent incident every single year. One in five people doesn't work and half live in poverty. Most collect welfare. I'd bet if most of these people got off their butts and got a job, the crime rate would drop tremendously, but that won't happen. Come on now. Oh, it gets worse. The other terrible place to live along the shores of Lake Michigan is Muskegon Heights. This place is a real winner. It's actually the most dangerous place in the whole state when you measure the number of senseless killings and beatings as a percentage of the population. It's even more violent per capita than Detroit. Spoiler alert. And it's not just violence. Muskegon Heights also has the highest burglary rate in the state too. So they break in and take your shit or they just beat you up out on the streets. Okay, got it. Welp, you've heard it all before. Detroit's really trying to get better. It really is. But as it stands, it's not only by far the most dangerous place in Michigan, it's one of the most dangerous places you can live in the entire country. 40% of all violent crimes that happened in Michigan happened in Detroit. And Detroit only has 14% of the state's population. 2020 was just a terrible year for Detroit, as it was for many of our country's other terrible places to live. There was a murder almost every day here, and that was the highest rate in nine years. Detroit's murder rate is nine times higher than the U.S. average. And Detroit's murder rate only went down 5% from that spike in 2020, and people in Detroit were actually happy about that. I guess it's worth celebrating especially because other major cities didn't go down at all after 2020. One reason Detroit's murder rates down from a spike in 1991 is there's just less people here. A lot of them are dead or just left a long time ago. Robberies also went down 17% here after a spike in 2020. Why? Well, cops say more cops on the streets. That's why. <laughs> what do you know? More cops on the streets and less crime. Why don't Minneapolis, LA, Seattle, and Portland pay attention? They're always talking about reducing police budgets. But today, Detroit still has 150 unfilled police positions. A lot of cops are leaving Detroit for other departments that pay better. Guess what? People don't want to be a cop in Detroit. Would you? And while murders and robberies went down a bit last year, sexual assaults were up 17% and carjackings were up 19%. Police Commissioner Willie Bell said, In reality, no one's coming to us and saying, You're doing a great job at fighting crime. And that's just sad. The cops just can't keep up. 40% of this city of 670,000 is in poverty, and the number of people out of work is five times higher than the U.S. average. Look at the population trend. 10% of the city's left in the last 10 years alone. Look at how many jobs have left. Look at how many homes have been torn down. No matter how many people leave, it won't be enough. Much of this place is very poor, desperate, and purposeless. Welcome to America. Well, we didn't get our perp. I think he got away from me. Likely somewhere out here on the back nine. That's just how it is in the state of Michigan. Criminals just keep getting away. It's because we're understaffed. Talk to Governor Whitmer if you want more cops on our streets. And hopefully you learned a lot about where the dangerous places in Michigan are. Hopefully these places get safer. I really do hope that. Now, if you're curious where the safest places in Michigan are, they are here as follows. Notice that none of the dangerous places that we talked about are in the UP. That's because there are very manly men up there who 
defend themselves well. Remember that. Patrick, now I'm off to golf. Got it, Tammy. Got it. Undercover. Hey everyone. So it's pretty clear by now that elected leaders aren't gonna help you. If you don't like what you saw in this video, demanding change won't work. You're gonna have to do it on your own. If you wanna be safe and want your community to be a place where people wanna live, you're gonna have to clean the place up yourselves. You're gonna have to work with your friends and neighbors to lower crime. Politicians clearly don't care as much anymore. It's up to us. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right.